A uh, wild weekend, uh, to say the least, for Foxy and I. <laughs> Friday, we traveled down to the beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, which, nice. by the way, it is summer down there. <laughs> it is 100% mm, it's summer. Cooking, huh? It is thick down there. As soon as we landed, just started sweating immediately. I had khaki shorts. Oh, look at I you. had khaki shorts what? on. Uh, figured I was going to die south. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah, sure. But bad luck. Uh, my sweater. Oh, oh yeah. it's it's a little tough. V in the back see, there. You see, so uh-huh. I get off the airplane because we're sitting on the runway there in the Atlanta, starting to <laughs> cooking. Yeah, yeah, starting to come into plane, and I'm sitting there, I'm sweating. I'm like, oh my god, and mm. I just get up, I don't even think about it, and then I go to grab like my ticket uh, in my back in, in my back pocket. I'm like. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> and normally in the jorts world, not a problem because you can't even tell in the jorts world because normally you get a little dark patch back there. If you buy it properly, you can't even tell. So now I'm in a bad situation. I'm walking through this Georgia airport with fucking mm. looks like I want a little doo doo back Damn there. It. Mm-hmm. But it was a good start to the weekend. We had a bunch of traffic. Uh, Atlanta traffic is no joke. No joke. Yeah. We turned around a corner and it was just uh, two hours worth of traffic. <laughs> like it, literally, we were going wide open, eighty miles an hour. This, it, per, I think we got here at the perfect time, like right before rush. Hour. <laughs> like that conversation's <laughs> happening. Oh my god! Because there's a wedding in Atlanta. We we flew into the airport, which is on the south side. The wedding was on the north side in Buckhead, uh, which is I guess is where all the money's at. Yep. It was uh, wh- so it was a little bit of a drive, eighty miles an hour, patting ourselves on the back. We turn a corner and it was a. <laughs> like almost got into an accident. So we sit through traffic. We do Atlanta for a little bit. And then it was time for this welcome party. We did nothing else. There was a rehearsal dinner before that, I guess, where there was a little practice rehearsal. Yeah. It's in the name. Then, uh, <laughs> then there was some speeches given. Okay, there. And we, we weren't there for that. We went to the welcome party afterwards, which is at St. Regis, which is the nicest place, I think, in America. Yeah. Sounds glorious. I, I think it's the nicest place in America. I, it, it was very expensive. I, I, it was very, very, very fucking. Expensive. There's just Bentleys and Ferraris lined oh, up out wow. front of the place. I mean, it was it was asinine. Beautiful. So we get there. We're the first people at the welcome party. <laughs> <laughs> we're the, we're, the, we're the, the first people at the welcome party. Awesome. So there's uh because the rehearsal dinner was running late. Yeah. I guess the speeches lasted a little longer than they thought. So the rehearsal dinner was running late. By the way, we're the only ones I think that weren't invited to the rehearsal dinner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's a woke yeah. party. <laughs> It's all right. I, by the way, I wouldn't have brought us either. Just no. Uh, there's no harm, no foul there. So we're at this welcome party all by ourselves. It's me, Foxy, seven bartenders, this guy called the Mad Violinist, who you might have oh. seen on America's Got Talent. Mm. He's working because he was assigned to start working at this time. So we're getting our own personal concert <laughs> from this guy named the Mad Violinist. He's playing every top 10 song, but with a fucking violin. Yeah. Crushing, by the way. Jesus. Just absolutely slaughtering. So we're befriending bartenders and servers at this point, right? This is a good idea. Yeah. Sure. This is going to end up helping us out later, Always. by the way. Just for future reference. Without a doubt. When you go to Vegas, what do you do? You take care of the bouncer. You grease up the bouncer so when you have to go to the bathroom, the bouncer runs you to the bathroom, moves everybody out of the way. You go pee. You take care of the bottle service people. Also take care of the bouncers. That's what we did at this thing. It was a good idea. So about 15, 20 minutes later, people start filtering in. And we're just, we've already, I mean, we basically claimed territory of this thing. Like this, we're sitting on a couch. We're literally sitting on one of the couches. There's only four or five couches. Uh, I'm wearing a polo and pants. It was prom for everybody else walking in there. <laughs> There's three-piece fucking suits walking in for this welcome party. I'm like, oh, my God. Coonan, who's one of my agents, uh, his dad happens to own the Atlanta Hawks. They're a basketball team. He, it, was him, it was him getting married. And Coonan is... When I say this, I mean this. Uh, it, it, he's just an electric individual. Mm-hmm. He's five foot three. He's this five foot three Jewish guy who is just everything is a dude, dude. Like everything, everything is going to work out yes. better than you could ever fathom. The most optimistic human I think I've ever been around, dude. So he walks in after this. I guess it was a little bit of a roast session in the rehearsal dinner. I guess it was a little bit of a roasting situation. He walks in, sees me dressed like this. He comes up. He goes. Dude, talent doesn't have to dress up like us, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I put in Foxy. I put in Foxy. He goes, dude, Foxy's a talent. <laughs> so they were like, everybody was so thankful we were there. Literally, everybody was so thankful we were there. They were awesome. Matthew Stafford, as soon as he walked in, like came a beeline right over to us. Like everybody, really? everybody was happy we were there. It was like, oh, I'm happy we fucking came to this. <laughs> no wedding gifts though for me and Foxy. We. Mm. 
Right. Yeah, cash. Zero wedding gifts. So I just decided, like, tonight we'll just buy everything at whatever bar we go to. There you go. Like, this will be my gift to at least the grooms. Tonight, if we go That's out, if we're invited to go out anywhere, I'll just buy everything for everybody all night. Like, that'll be my gift. The night before the wedding, yeah. let's go ahead and get slaughtered. Yeah. So as the thing's wrapping up, the St. Regis people are, like, pushing everybody out, basically. Mm-hmm. It's getting kind of hilarious. It's an expensive time. You, you can't just <laughs> you can't be there an extra 20, 30 minutes. Don't even fucking think about it. They're one of Coonan's boys, though. He has a group of boys down there. I think they all had a lot of money, but they're bros. Like, Matthew Stafford's in that group. Yep. It is just a bunch of bros. Mm-hmm. Like, these dudes, they fucking, these dudes get down. Like, these dudes are a good time. <laughs> so as I'm leaving, uh, the one guy, he's a little bit taller. He's a handsome guy. He hits me. He goes, you going out with us tonight? I was like, yeah, man. I was I was hoping that would be cool. He was like, we're going to supply and demand. And I was like, oh, okay, man. I thought he was like fucking with me. <laughs> I thought he was talking like like a Home Depot type place. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, uh, so like literally I look at Fox and I was like, oh, one of the little fuck boys, man. He, he, he just told me we're going to some like fucking hardware store. I, we're not going out with that fucking group. So then uh, Coonan's dad, who owns the Hawks, incredible life story. Like he started out as a salesman. Like he literally worked his way up. So I was talking to him about his whole story. He was so thankful we came. Everybody was so nice. Mm-hmm. And then that guy walks over to me again. And he goes, are you coming with us or not? And I was like, I'm not going to some fucking hardware store, bro. Like, get out of here. I don't know what the fuck you think this is. Like, I'll go have a good time with Foxy here. We're, we will have a good time. Mm-hmm. He was like, no, that's a fucking bar, dude. I was like, oh, okay. I am so sorry. I judged you. <laughs> I thought you were just rich white kid from Atlanta. That's 100% on me for judging you. So we went there and... I mean, we went. We went there and we went. It was unbelievable. Burned it down. Burned it down, bro. <laughs> okay. As soon as I walked in, I mean, I did the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did, it was classic. Foxy, how many people do you think are in here? <laughs> Foxy, how many people do you think are in this whole like, place right now? Mm. Foxy starts doing the fucking like, police head count like he's a fire I, I really did. <laughs> he's a fucking fire Just touching the bar. <clears throat> I think there's like uh, 60 people. Back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Foxy. So I go to the bartender. I go, yeah, I'd like 120 shots. <laughs> <laughs> I like two shots for everybody in here. And uh, the lady goes, get the fuck out of here, she says to me. And I was like, no, no, I'm being 100% serious. So then the owner comes over. It's always like a double check. Oh, <laughs> There's always like, yeah, a, like double- a pit boss comes yeah, exactly, over. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sir, you can, make, what? you can make that $100,000 bet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sir, you are splitting queens? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 split them up, bub. Uh, so the owner comes over. Or manager, I don't remember which one. And he goes, uh, what do you want to do? I was like, I'd like to buy shots just for everybody in here. He's like, does it matter what type? I was like, I just want it to taste good because it's kind of early in the night, you know? He was like, you got it, bud. And then they gave me the price, and I paid uh, like five times what the price was. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, get me like two more, though. Like, I want two more. You keep two of those for a tip, but I'd also like two more rounds at any given moment. Uh-huh. And they're like, okay. So these people are all on my side now. So this place is all on our side now. So about five minutes pass. Everybody's talking. Foxy and I have nobody to talk to. So we have two. <laughs> but you just we, bought everybody a drink. Why, I, what do you mean? It was like a high school reunion. And the party point. beforehand. You didn't make friends? <laughs> no, I mean, kind of. Not really. It was, it was a lot of... I mean, we beat. I feel like everybody liked us. Fucking exactly. rubbing elbows. I feel like everybody liked us, but you go back for like a high school yeah, reunion. Correct. You talk to your boys. You know what I mean? Like these people haven't really. Not even us too. By the other people that are yeah, at this yeah. bar too. Mm-hmm. It's all like people that are like back in town. It felt like. Right. So we just saddled up to the bar, and uh, I looked at the owner. It was probably like three minutes later. I was like, I, I think it's time for that. <laughs> you know that second <laughs> three I already ordered. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's time. So then, as we start going, I do that a few more times. I think hindsight, the next day, we looked back on it. I, I did it probably four times too many. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So before the weekend starts, uh, Pat goes to the bank, and he get, he gets a bunch of money, yeah, right? Cash. And he Just because gets- your card doesn't work. So what happens if yeah. you go somewhere and you order shots like this, and then you give them your card, and it doesn't go through? You're the worst human yeah, on earth. Yeah, I mean, you're, yeah. you're at the, exactly. you're at the, at the, I almost Frog. got fucking arrested at a place in Hermosa Beach, California. And I was like, I'm never falling for that again. So I always go and get cash he gets the cash and then he hands me a wad and he goes hey you know it's gonna be a good weekend let's have a good time make sure you tip people make sure you take care of everyone let's have some fun and i didn't know this until literally today i haven't even told you this at that bar I spent six hundred of that dollar. <laughs> oh my so god! You had to spend. So I won four too many. You sounds like you won at least two too many. Dude. 
<laughs> so we were doing it. We were doing everybody it. was getting after everybody was having a great time. This was one of the most positive bars I've ever been in my life. By the way, when you buy everybody like yeah. 10 shots, yeah. it feels as if everybody's yes. on a team. You yeah. know what I mean? So everybody's on the same team. And at 1231 a.m. or at 1221 a.m., one or the other, I have to check my screenshot. 1221 a.m. Kuna comes over and he goes, dude, fuck code red, bro. Code red. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, what happened? This is the night before his wedding. He's like, oh my, bro, I just got a text from my rabbi. And I was like, started laughing. <laughs> I've never heard that text before, especially on a day. I've never heard that before. I just started laughing. He was like, oh, I got to go. He goes outside. Like two of his boys go out. And Foxy and I are still like partying inside, right? Mm -hmm. So we're still having a good time. Yeah. And uh, I see like there's a little bit of a crowd though out the front, like with all of Kunin's boys. I'm like, ah, oh, there might be like a fight or something like this. Need, at least, <laughs> need at least show face at this situation. You know, what I, mean? need, need, I don't. I'm not going to fight anybody, but the whole back guy. I need to at least show face over here. You know, if, I mean, these people are being very nice to us. So this rabbi texting, dude. These guys are outside starting shit. Let's no. go. <laughs> Rabbi Some priest is out here. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. So funny you say that because we get up to the the front and Kunin <laughs> reads the text. After the rehearsal dinner, the rabbi had a long talk with himself and he finally came to it because Kunin is Jewish. His wife, uh, like Baptist or something. So a pastor was representing uh, one half of the congregation. Mm. The rabbi was representing the other half of the congregation. And at the rehearsal dinner, the rabbi was fed up with how much the other side was promoting oh, Jesus. Oh, 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 so there was real beef between oh, the two hilarious. heads of state. <laughs> so the rabbi sends this emergency text that says, after further consideration, I cannot do the wedding. Wow. Tomorrow. So. <laughs> 12.30 at night? 12, eight, wow. 12 20 maybe. 12, there was there 12, 20 or 12, 30. What a dick. So, by the way, Coonan's getting paid pretty well. Hold on. Coonan's reading this, though. Coonan's like, well, come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. So, we're laughing. Like, I'm, me and Foxy, like, I understand it's probably not a situation where everybody would laugh, but I was like, man, this is one of the most epic things I've ever heard in my entire yeah. life. And everybody in the group starts laughing, you know? And uh, I was like, you know, like if these two can't get along, I can easily get ordained again right now. I'm already, I'm already ordained. It might be expired. And he was like, dude, you, you could do that right now? I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, man. So I go on to Universal Life Church. Uh, where I, I've been ordained one time, but it is expired. I got the fucking thirty-five dollar overnight with the badge. Got reordained, and it was right there in the conversation. Coonan goes, "I got to get out of here because I got to go talk to my wife." But if they, be prepared, bro, you might, <laughs> you might be doing the wedding tomorrow. I was like, "Man, I'm ready." Like, what are you talking about? I am ready. So he leaves. I guess they had to go put out some fires. We stayed out till uh, three. Yeah. Very nice of us to do that. <laughs> uh, it was a good decision, obviously. We really didn't regret it at all. Not at all. <laughs> but we were walking through Buckhead, and a lot of the bouncers knew who I was. So we had to stop at a couple of places. Uh, a lot of lines at these places, and mm -hmm. these bouncers were being very nice to us. So we stopped at a couple other places. We go back. The next morning, we wake up absolutely feeling like dog shit. I mean, I was just so... Uh, it, was, <laughs> it was just one question, you know? Yeah. You know... In the hangover, whenever old Cuzzy walks into the bathroom and there's like a tiger there or whatever. Yes. I did that walk into like the hotel, um, which I didn't have a remote to my TV, by the way. <laughs> I didn't have any towels. Foxy had an end of the hall suite uh, with a fucking LED happens. TV. Always happens. I don't know how. <laughs> Ellie, he had like a fucking home movie theater. <laughs> I didn't even have a fucking remote or towels. I had to dry off with a t-shirt. Been there. <laughs> Only Been packed there. three t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad scene. But I did like that Zach Galifianakis walk into the bathroom, you know, like you know how they show it, like him bobbling. Yeah. And I walk in and I look in the mirror and I look right at my face and I go, like, why, why do you always have to do it? Man? I said it out loud to the, why, why do you always have to do it? Why, why do you have to do this to yourself? So then I send Foxy a text. I'm like, uh, I think it was like a, like, well, what a night. And he was like, what a night. And I was like, I'm dead. And he responded. Dead in all capital letters. So then we passed back out for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. I had to go buy toothpaste. I didn't pack toothpaste. Mm. So I didn't have towels or toothpaste. <laughs> so I go pick up toothpaste and then we, we I pick him up and we go to get pizza. Right. And 
while we're getting pizza, which you don't go to Atlanta to get pizza, there's this place called Buckhead Pizza that is fucking delicious. Ah, I don't know, actually. <laughs> the state of mind that I was yeah. in, I have no clue. But it seemed, it seemed very good. Yeah. Like, it was very good. It was in that nice, Buckhead's that nice part of town. I would have enjoyed it. I think so. I think we. it was better than the fucking shit he called the best pizza in this city. Oh, Papa Ray's. Oh, yeah, man. it was better than that. It had to have been. 1,000%. Uh, we'll see. Um, so we're struggling through that whole thing. I get a text that says, dude, could you really do the wedding tonight if you had to? Oh, damn. And I respond with, absolutely. At that exact time, <laughs> Foxy go. was just getting back from his first puke. <laughs> <laughs> Foxy was just getting back from his first puke, which I documented on IG. Yeah. I was loving it because he had sunglasses on inside, refused to take them off. I mean, he already looked hilarious. And then he was just disappearing out of nowhere, puking and coming back. Oh, I had to go pee. It was like, <laughs> the first time he said, oh, false alarm, false alarm. And then I was like, you were gone for like 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I puked, man. I puked. It wasn't a big deal. But I get a text then. We wrap it up there, and now it's time to go to the wedding. And we go back to uh, the place, and I get uh, a text that, hey, bygones have been bygones. Uh, these two are ready. They're good to go. Uh, sure. So I've no longer been called into the batter's box. Mm-hmm. By the way, not happy about it. No, I wouldn't. Oh. Yeah. Not happy about it. Oh, I, come on. I was not happy about it. I mean, I had 35 bucks for that thing overnight. <laughs> that could have been a $15 certificate. You know what I mean? That could have been a $15 certificate. Um Anyways, McAfee Weddings, McAfee Marriages, uh, potentially a new business plan. You're going to have to come <laughs> with a great crush. offer, though. You're gonna, I got a lot of <laughs> offers. I mean, when I posted that photo, I was still like, that was coming fresh out of that bathroom uh, visit, so I wasn't really coherent. And then when I, I woke back up, I had like a bunch of people who were like, May 21st, 2020. <laughs> May, uh, blah, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? And then I got some brides even coming in that were like, my husband already asked, but we would love it too. And I'm like, I just don't know if I can do what I just did. <laughs> I don't know if I can do what I just did again. That was like a Vegas trip. So we we go to the wedding, and you could sense the big dick energy between the two leaders of the state. Oh, she's <laughs> awesome. That. You know what I mean? You yeah. could sense like the one trying to out Jesus your God. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it was awesome. It was like a it was like a back and forth situation, and there was only a few of us that really knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So there's only a few of us who knew that these two at like 12.30 last night all were about to fucking throw hands <laughs> over whether or not Jesus came back out of that cave. Fucking crusades. Honestly, they were ready to go at it. So it was it was a beautiful ceremony. This St. Regis place, they they spared no dime. I mean, no dime at all. Coonan freestyled his, um, what's his vows? His vows. Mm. <laughs> Always a good idea. Acapella. Oh. No, he didn't prepare anything. No. Oh, they wrapped it. It's on me. Improvisational. Yeah, maybe. well, freestyle, yeah. I guess. I, yeah. I, you're, you're right. You're 100% right. <laughs> well, that's on me. Well, acapella clearly means like he sang it. No music. Yeah, well, he did kind of. I thought mean. it was a beat. You know what? Every day, you know what you and I do? We go acapella, acapella bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much different whenever we get a little music behind us. Um, so she gives these beautiful vows. Very beautiful vows, you know, with the Lord and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, Coonan. I firmly believe that he either forgot to write vows or didn't know he was supposed to write vows. And he just so happened to have like an index card in his pocket that he pulled out and ripped. He did the rip up the vows thing. I'm going to speak from the heart. (laughs) I wonder, I wonder when he was told that she wrote out her vows and he realized, Oh, classic. Do you not just rip up the (laughs) vows? He's the best. It was classic. So he does this entire thing. It's electric, obviously. He starts speaking to the crowd like he's doing (laughs) stand-up. It was fucking awesome. And uh, it was a beautiful story. It was funny. Mm -hmm. It was very, very funny. It was it was everything. They did it. They get married. Mazel. Okay, we walk out. Let's have a good time. Jewish wedding. First time ever at this thing. So we didn't really know what to expect. We get in this cocktail hour. Uh, beforehand, it's all beautiful, and I feel terrible. But there's a couple people who are fans of the show there yep. that are coming. Sam Martin, punter for the Lions, he's fucking like pouring it on me thick because he didn't go out the night before. So it's, hey, I, bro, I've been waiting for one of these nights with you. I was like, well, you could have had it last night. <laughs> <laughs> could have had it last night. I got, I got a flight tomorrow. I'm not doing anything tonight. So like, I was being four drinks. Bartenders from the night before were there again. Mm-hmm. They didn't realize what happened after I left that little San <laughs> Regis thing. So I was getting back into it, having a good time, and then they debuted where the reception was in this room was fucking it was like straight out of uh like a like a sheik's movie yes. like, it was like if a sheik had uh there was just like so there was a five or six 
What, what, how, set, what do you call like a band? There was four uh, backup dancers, a yeah. lead singer, a drummer, a saxophone, a piano, a guitar. It was like a 14-piece wow. band up there with a full performance. The ladies were dancing the entire time mm -hmm. while singing and rapping. It was... They were good. Good. They were Jesse's Girl IG. Oh, Follow, so us. Good. <laughs> so good. Follow us. Follow us. Jesse's Girl IG. They put on a four-hour performance. Didn't with, stop. Didn't stop one time. Mm -hmm. uh, so we sit down. We're having dinner. You know, we're eating. Food was very good, very small, but yeah. very good. Mm -hmm. I'm a bigger guy, though. Yeah. Like, I eat more. And we only thing we had was a pizza since this point, so I was a little hungry. But it was some of the I, – I would say it's the best lamb I've ever had in my life. Ooh. It was so good. The entire wedding, the way I described it, was if you had the first round pick for everything at a wedding, <laughs> that was this one. That was exactly what it was. Yes. That was exactly what it was. So speeches start happening now. Okay, at the wedding. Speeches start happening. And Coonan's dad goes up there and speaks. And he does a little throwback. He rips up the vows. Like he's like, I'm just going to do this from the heart. He rips it up. Everybody's laughing. Um, and he ends the speech with, it was, it was nice. You know, welcome to the family. Mm -hmm. we, we gained a daughter today. You know, it was all good classic. stuff. Classic, classic stuff. He ends it with, the only thing I ask is tonight we drink every ounce of alcohol in here, <laughs> eat every single bit of food we have in here until they kick us out of this joint. And then they walk, <laughs> clap, okay? So then Coonan gives a speech. Coonan gives a speech, and it's like a it's like a seven minute stand up routine. Oh. It's good though. I mean, I he got six pops out of me, like loud pops out of me. And some and one particular part, part, not everybody was laughing, but I gave a loud pop because it was just a very comical thing, romantic, obviously. And then he goes, uh, "They're gonna start singing." He goes, "Let's get it on." So, like the mood out of everybody in that particular from the Jewish side of yeah. the wedding was like. Hey, at these types of events, we get very fucked up. That was exactly <laughs> what it was. Because you got to remember, the split in the congregation yes. was there the entire time. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the Jewish religion that was being represented there wanted to make sure that it was represented in a proper fashion. <laughs> like, hey, listen, this is what happens. Like, hey, let's get it on, was his exact words. There's an ice bar in the back. Oh. The entire thing was an ice bar. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, massive so cool. ice bar. Obviously, it was open bar, the whole thing. Yeah. So we're getting after it. Band starts playing, food's good. Foxy gets served dessert. I don't get served dessert. <laughs> I have a picture of it actually. Everybody in the wedding got served dessert except for me. I mean, it, was, it was a wild scene. I don't People know. Well, they listen I, to the show, though. You know, they know you're on keto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend, I was, I ate and drank everything that was in front of me. That pizza was so fucking good. That might be why, by the way. <laughs> Hadn't had a yeah. carb in a while. Mm hmm. Could that be. was also our problem Friday night, I think. Yes. Mm. Hadn't had a carb in a while. Too. Oh, yeah. We didn't it hit you any. quicker. Oh, huh. uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it hit us quicker, but on the backside, you uh, see, yep. on, on the upside of the backside was very high because I it was it was one of those things where I felt good the entire time, very active the entire time. Yep. We were out dancing, feeling good, great conversations with people, learning a lot about people. I just didn't expect to feel the way I felt. I, I did not expect to feel that way. We ate no food, and we mixed in zero waters. Huh, that was the mistake. Zero waters by anyone. That was the mistake. So then we, um, the, the party kit's going. In a Jewish wedding is the most electric thing on the history of, of fucking earth. <laughs> when I say this, I mean this. The Labeni Hana. Yeah. So that is uh, like a bird call. <laughs> for everybody to get on dance floor. Like, you know, we have the electric slide. They do that. They do the electric slide. You know, you had the Cupid shuffle. Yeah. They do that. We have that. A little bit softer now. Yeah. That's our, that's my, that's we my have that one as well. We have shout. We, uh, shout. Shout. We have shout as well. They did that as well. But then they have this other one that is literally, it's a bird call for every human that's at the place. You go running up to the dance floor, <laughs> and then you dance in a circle. Everybody has their arms around each other, and it's like a fucking, like a, a you're, it's a tornado. Yep. I almost saw a 70-year-old lady get caught up in that fucking <laughs> I, There was a drunk guy that was leading the particular <laughs> side of the tornado in a circle, and this older lady was, did not know he was coming at the rate he was. And I was 
was like, I don't know if I want to stop. Should I stop this whole situation? She was just dancing by herself. And then somehow she just had this like awareness level that was much better than anything I've ever seen. She literally just danced around the guy and the group just went around her. She was an old lady. Oh, her first dance tornado. It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so at that moment, they take breaks in that song, by the way. That love, la, 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 I don't know what it is. La, 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 la. That thing goes, okay? And then there's like breaks. And during the breaks of that song, they're just playing like the instrumentals almost. <laughs> People were getting on fucking chairs, okay? So then the chair thing happens. And they had a seatbelt on the fucking oh, chair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so these people, you get in there, you strap it up. You literally strap it like up. Like bucket seat ones or just across the waist? Across the, just exactly how I was doing it right there in front of your face. <laughs> <laughs> just exactly I how I was. What's that? I have these. No, no, he no, did it like this. Yeah, yeah, but I did it around my waist like seven yeah, both, times. Both. And you, you don't have those. Yeah, you, no, you, nobody has this. It's, I wish I had those. Yeah, yeah, but that's not what you said. <laughs> I meant to say wish. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine though if they had that thing fucking roller coaster and put yes. the flat down? <laughs> no, they just had a lap belt attached to this chair. And then there was this one guy called the Empire. He was the um, the largest man there. He Big was dude. six foot eight Jewish guy. Probably four. He might have been four hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. He might have been four hundred pounds, but he was in the middle of the tornado. He was in the eye of the tornado, by the way, <laughs> rallying up the chairs that are getting tossed into him one hand. <laughs> very much a let's get it on situation. So then uh, Coonan gets up there with his bride. They're on two different chairs and they're holding a towel, a napkin to connect each other. And they, all the groomsmen start lifting him mm -hmm. up and tossing him, right? And it does seem as if they're trying to throw him. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a fucking hang clean. Like yes. they're trying to like fucking like shoot him <laughs> off. Seatbelt was necessary. Seatbelt was, ne they say normally they go raw, no seatbelt. Right. A lot of the Jewish folk were judging. The oh, seatbelt. Oh. They were. They were judging the particular chair because it was a softer chair because there was a seatbelt on there. But I don't know how it would happen. Coonan would have fucking hit the roof. <laughs> <laughs> they were throwing him. I mean, it was obviously electric. More spins were happening around it. So then they go down, and I'm like, oh, that was awesome. Foxy's filming this entire thing, by mm -hmm. the way. So Foxy, as soon as that thing started, I was like, I got to go do that. That's it. That's it. That's it. They were Vince Vaughn. <laughs> I, I've i been waiting for this since <laughs> watching the movie <laughs> Wedding Crashers. So I, we literally, I sprinted to the dance floor. Kind of scared to get in. I was, it was a little bit of a, like a double Dutch situation with the tornadoes. <laughs> I was like, ah, I'm out. I'm out. Because all the um, the people that believe in the sequel of the Bible, they were all on the outside. Right. It was th this was the most I've seen inside, outside type operation. <laughs> it, was, it was like that. But then the um, Coonan's family were like forcing them in basically right like, get your fucking ass in here and i got in a wave one i got a wave nice, in. I, like I got that. waved in yeah and i was in there and i'm in the middle of the fucking eye of the storm there and uh, old dad gets on the chair and straps up guess who's got the back right <laughs> uh, back <laughs> back <laughs> left <laughs> yeah back left peg and uh i'm like oh my god i'm a part of this right now <laughs> and then there's a, a like a one two three it's like uh, feel the rhythm feel the ride get on up it's bob side <laughs> type type thing and then we just start and I, I, the guy I was standing next to, I felt him trying to throw Coonan's dad off. Oh, yeah. I, I felt him trying to do it. And I was like, I guess this is what we're doing. And Coonan's dad was just fucking up there. Oh, gee, just like, yeah. If he falls off, you're accessory, essentially, right? Well, if he dies, yeah, for sure. But it, it felt like the thing I was worried about was if he falls off, I think somebody catches him because there's a big enough wave there. Oh. I think that might be something that sure, happens. Yeah. But for me, the car sickness. Oh. I don't know how they're doing it up there. I mean, we drive on these bottles here. I get fucked start getting a little wheezy. <laughs> these dudes are getting their stomachs punched up in the air. And by the way, that 10-piece band performing for this whole thing, it's like a 12, 15-minute straight thing, <laughs> performing this entire time with dance moves <laughs> in the back. Incredible. It was, yeah, it was electric. It was just absolutely electric. So that ends. I'm dripping in sweat. Everybody is sweaty at this point. Michael Klein, my other agent, goes... Uh, rule of a Jewish wedding, by the way, two to three dress shirts uh, because you're going to do what you just did through your dress shirts uh, every single time. On the dance floor. I was like, I like you guys just have that little asterisk. In there. <laughs> by the way, we think this might be a four dress shirt wedding. <laughs> this is an electric group of humans coming through here. So we go back to the bar. We start drinking. We start having a good time. Mm -hmm. We get yelled at for not being on the dance floor because yep. everybody leaves the dance floor at that point. So then to go drink, yeah. I think, and to cool down, 
there was some people that weren't happy. We were, the father said you got you have to drink everything in there. Well, and let's get it on. I mean, we were, we You're were doing challenged. we were doing both. <laughs> so we go back to the dance floor after parties, great, having a blast, and I get called to like another room. Oh, okay, I get called to another room. What? Like, hey, there's a the there's Godfather. A, Yep. Were you like, please Basically. let this be the Illuminati? Please let this be the Illuminati? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Hey, we got to remember, too. As soon as I showed up in those shorts tux, as soon as I walked in, as soon as I walked in at St. Regis, every human in there stopped and started laughing. Every, <laughs> every, the, no exaggeration. The pop I got in the, from the people that worked at the hotel to the people that were just passing through the lobby there nice. to the people working valet outside, as soon as I got out of the car, there was literally just a look at me, a laugh, <laughs> and like a finger point. And I was like, yeah, you're goddamn right. So I thought potentially somebody was like, uh, we don't know who he is. But the motherfucker that showed up in the shorts, <laughs> we'd like to talk to. So I get told that the, there's a bar on the other side of this floor. It's like back through some things. Like, uh, so people want to see you back there. And I'm like, uh, fuck it. All right. I'll, yeah, let's go, Foxy. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm on die, you're coming with. <laughs> we go in there, and it's the head of CAA, uh, the head of CAA sports, uh -huh. and the head of CAA something else. And it's just like, uh, it's a round table, leather couches. with uh, It's like a bar environment with some fries and wings on the table yep. in the middle. Mm -hmm. There's a TV on up above their shoulder. There's a couple other people in the room. And I literally just walked in, and I was like... Oh, Jesus, this is a pretty fucking big deal. So I, I brought up my own chair. I brought up my own chair and sat down. I was like, boys, how are we doing here? And uh, it was a 20, 30-minute conversation yeah. with uh, the head of CA Media. And then it was a 20, 30-minute conversation with another guy. And then I get a Jimmy Sexton, who reps all the SEC coaches, I guess. He's like his first He's official. Doing, doing quite well for himself. Yeah. Uh, his first official client was Reggie White. Hmm. He was friends with Reggie White. It was actually a really cool story. This guy, his friends with Reggie White. They were meeting with a bunch of agents. They didn't like any of them. So Reggie just asked him, why don't you do it? Now he just reps basically everybody. Oh, it's <laughs> nice. Awesome. Yeah, and he's like very, yeah, he lives in Tennessee. Big guy. He's you, a big guy. He's, he's awesome. He was an electric figure. Uh, talking to him, he, he gave less than zero fucks about me. <laughs> that guy, I was out there to talk about that guy. I'm not going to be a coach. That guy gave zero fucks. But he was just an entertaining human being. Great conversation with him. So then I'm, I go and sit on the other side of the table. Okay? I sit down on the other side of the table. I go and get a Red Bull vodka. Uh, and I come back. And I sit down on the other side of the table. And there is this character who, his name is Vino. Okay, Love Vino is all anybody has said is that guy's my boss. So everybody said that guy's the boss. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who he is, <laughs> Vino. I don't know exactly what Vino is, but I know Vino is one of the most incredible humans I've ever talked to. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Pat? I, I've been hearing about you a lot. I, I'm not a sports agent. I'm a sales guy. I just so happen to be in the agent <laughs> business. I hear a lot of great things about you. Let me tell you what I like about you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Vino. I did not know that was coming out. He's like, yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah. So what I like about you is not only you're a talent, incredible talent. I'm not an agent, so I would, I'm, a, I'm a salesman. You're an incredible talent. I love watching your shit, okay? But also, you're an entrepreneur. And when you put the entrepreneur together with the talent, I'm fucking stuck. <laughs> Take it easy. So I start dying. He was exactly taking this. <laughs> I start dying laughing. I'm like, yo, Vino, you're an electric guy. He was like, well, I'm just very fucking lucky. Man. <laughs> I don't know. I, we just try to make business, try to make people happy. Honestly, that's all I try to do. I, I, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, it just, I'm lucky. I, he goes, uh, he goes. You know, Mike uh, Francesa. I go. I'm just learning about Mike Francesa. By the way, he goes. Okay, so I've been listening to Francesa 30 years, right? I'm a big fan. Grew up in the area. I went and sat down with me. He and I are doing business together now, so we got to get you two linked up. I was like, oh, oh, yes. Yes. yes, 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 we do. He said, okay, uh, we can make that happen. No problem. I'll text client Mike. Mike's your guy. Yeah. I'll text Mike on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're talking to Mike Tuesday. <laughs> oh, I'm like, Vino, you are the fucking man. He was like, yeah, man, you two would like each other, so it'd be good. It'd be good for me, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> this dude, I, I wanted to sit there forever and just talk to this guy. He's got a wealth of knowledge, obviously. Mm -hmm. He's done a lot of things. I, I think he's the head of CAA. He's... 
<laughs> knows everybody, it sounded like. And he was one of the most down to earth humans. Like he literally yeah. sounded like he said it a couple of times, like I'm not an agent. I right. was just a sales guy who just so happened to fall in it. <laughs> but he was just a cool fucking guy. Bald head, electric. Like electric individual. Just he had a lot how of old, how old of a guy? He seemed like he was uh, probably in his 40s. Yeah. Yep. Seemed like he was in his 40s. Everybody was like kind of. Oh, see, I would have guessed 50s, 60s. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was like in his 40s. Everybody was a lot younger than I thought. For sure. So it was kind of a inspiring thing. Yes. I was like, oh, man, these guys are a lot younger than I thought they were going to be. I thought mm-hmm. they were going to be like 70-year-old people. Right. Wouldn't get it with me or anything. Vino, complete opposite. <laughs> Love your shit. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking drafting. <laughs> hey. That's brilliant. <laughs> Everybody could have done that. Everybody could have done it. It chose not to white because you you did it. <laughs> I was like, you're damn right. You know, you're damn right I, I did. You're damn right. I, that's what I'm saying, though. That's what I'm saying, though. So you and I talked for like 20, 30 minutes. We got summoned to the dance floor again. Yep. Because uh, there was a dance floor on the other side still open. It was kind of uh, emptying up, I guess. So we got summoned back to the dance floor. So we all go back over there. And fucking Vino is crushing it on the dance floor all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, he's crushing it on the dance floor. Floor. He's got like glow sticks uh, in his ears. I'm like, this fucking guy. Awesome. This guy is my fucking guy right here. Uh, Sarah Spain and her husband were there. Mm-hmm. They sat at our table. They were dancing. Ali LaForce was there. She was dancing a good bit. We were just having a good time out there. Fox and I were the last two off the dance floor, though. Yeah. I mean, that's me. Of course. Everybody just kind of sort of disappeared. Because yeah. <laughs> we're, I was kind of, I mean, it's kind of when when you're at these weddings, a lot of people are couples, right? So whenever you're summoned to dance, you just kind of got to dance by yourself. And I'm okay with that. I mean, I'll dance by myself. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of moves. So I started just dancing by myself. Foxy started dancing by himself. Yep. Next thing we know, we're like 30, 45 minutes into dancing by ourselves in there, kind of uh, bouncing around there. And then all of a sudden, everybody's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Everybody was gone. I was like, fuck. Well, he can't well, fucking yell at us for not being on dinner. We're gonna <laughs> shut this place down. That was that picture. Yes. That picture was when everybody was gone, and we had already been summoned to the dance floor a couple of times. I was like, oh, the last fuckers on the dance floor. Just wanna, <laughs> I just want to let that be known that we were the last fuckers on the dance floor. Mm-hmm. Having a blast. It was awesome. Then we go out again that night. <laughs> we go out after that, obviously, to the same area that we went to the night before. Yep. Because at this point, we, we'd made friends. At sure. this point, right? That's a good move. Yeah, so we put in work. <laughs> we had made friends, yeah. and I had like six Red Bull vodkas. I was nowhere near sleeping. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> nowhere near sleeping. And if I have that that short tuxedo shorts on where I look that good, mm-hmm. utilize it. Like, let's. I'm not just going to take this thing off right now. No, there's no way. No, no. no what are we talking about? You got to make it a night. Come on. <laughs> so we go up, <laughs> and Sam Martin's at a place, and he calls us there. It was called Big Sky or something. Had a stage there. It was like a pretty cool spot. It was awesome. We walk there. We get through there. We do the whole thing. We get in there. We link up with Sam Martin, who's dating Nastia Lukin, uh, the Olympic gold medal uh, gymnast. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nastia Lukin, blonde-headed girl. Sam Martin's dating her. Uh, they seem like a very good, happy couple. Very. Them. Very dancing, the whole thing. I think they're going to potentially... I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna hey, put those those uh, kids got a chance. Hey, hey. <laughs> they got a chance. I saw a lot of love in those eyes. <laughs> I saw a lot of love in those eyes. We meet up with them. We sit there. Place is packed. And it was it was a much different demo than the room we were in the night before. So I was starting yeah. to get stopped by a lot of people down there. I guess we got a pretty good little fan base down there in Georgia yeah. Tech. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you guys down there, by the way. So I was getting stopped a lot. Now, granted, I walked in there wearing shorts, tux. <laughs> yeah. He had a tux on. Yeah. I had a fucking headband on that was a glow-in-the-dark thing. <laughs> I mean, we walked in there. We were calling attention to ourselves. Pretty much. But uh, there was a lot of people that were like walking up saying, what's up, what's up, what's up? I was like, oh, nice to meet you guys. It was very cool. I enjoy those conversations with people, especially from out of town because I don't know. Like that, we got people. I had no idea we had people there, and then we have a lot of people. There was there. a lot, yeah, a lot of people. Somebody almost crashed their Uber to tell it. To stop. <laughs> yeah, it was the car was sideways in the middle of the fucking street at yep. like yeah. three a.m. because the guy, two kids, hopped out of their Uber to take a picture. They told the guy to stop, like, and the guy like pulled because <laughs> we were walking down the street. It was pretty cool. Really good people down there, uh, and we sit down with Sam Martin and their little group in the back. We're having a couple of drinks. Uh, we get hungry again, so we go out to get food. There's a food truck out front. And it was at that moment I realized that 
I ain't never seen a city that loves cocaine more than Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> never in my entire life have I seen a city love cocaine like uh, this. It was unreal. It felt like I went back to like, I don't know when uh, uh, cocaine had its big boom, like the 80s, maybe 70s. Mm -hmm. I don't know when it was. Mm -hmm. It felt like that's what they were living in. We, I had no less... Then 10 kids come up to me and offer me cocaine. 100%. With bags in hand, yes. opening it in public, like on the dance floor. Not, not like, yeah, like you hear these stories like, oh, uh, in the bathroom, obviously somebody's doing cocaine. Like you hear those stories. Not, these kids were pouring out like sandwich sized, <laughs> fucking sandwich sized bags. You want some? It was I'm so like, normal. Too. No, no, I don't. Yeah, my mom packed it for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In, in front of probably 200, 300 yes. people, these kids were just fucking doing cocaine. I was like, this is insane. <laughs> this is absolute insanity. And they were like, you don't want any? I'm like, no, man, no, no, thank you, though. And they're like, oh, okay. And then they would do one for me. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they would, they would extend it. And then they would just put it in their pocket, spilling shit everywhere, which I know <laughs> that is not. I, I mean, I've had a couple of friends that have had a run with the old uh, white devil and that is not something that happens and then it, i'd get three feet further and it would be uh, somebody tap me on the shoulder if you need any cocaine i got you <laughs> <laughs> i'm like man i feel like we're potentially in like a cocaine capital here in atlanta <laughs> go to the bathroom there's fucking a line yes like uh you, you actually ask like are you going to the bathroom or they're like no 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 i'm like okay i'm gonna sneak by and piss okay yeah yeah we're just waiting for the yeah. Stall. Yeah, the stall. <laughs> out the door. <laughs> Literally out the door. Out the door. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I feel like I went back to that club that we watched the- uh, that Studio 54. I oh, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, man, this is too- that. I never guess, I would have <laughs> never guessed that people do this with cocaine still. We would just Same. be walking by people, and you would like look at someone in the eyes and be like, yep, I know what they're doing, and then it'd be like the next- <laughs> On the yep. street, too? Like, yes. I don't think Big Sky was the only place. Because like, on the street, we were getting stopped. It was, it was like, McAfee! <laughs> Blake, yo, what's up, man? <laughs> want some coke <laughs> I'm like no man I'm very sweaty I was just at a Jewish wedding but I don't I don't do the cocaine man but it was everybody was having their best life dude it was cool everybody was having their best life down there I didn't see a single fight I didn't no, see a single awesome. arrest I saw cops all over the place I saw a lot of cocaine yeah. <laughs> but it seemed to be all very orderly it was very it was almost it was impressive no drama fun. There was no drama except for the rabbi. And, the <laughs> and then I went to, right. uh, then we flew to Hartford, Connecticut, uh, WWE watch along, uh, then released, uh, that was a good time. A lot of humans, a lot of humans. Oh yeah. It's kind of hard to talk to people when there's 45 people talking. Yeah, How about the chef? You don't say. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Oh, Schefter. Good call. Uh, yeah. yeah. That yeah, was. Adam Baum. So I go to the pee, toilet. I go to pee in there and there's a very nice bathroom, very nice bathroom. Mm -hmm. And Schefter is in the middle urinal of seven. And there's nobody to his right or nobody to his left. <laughs> He's not flanked by anybody, okay? So he had been in there either the longest or he just got in there. He had two phones out and he was peeing. And as soon as I walked in, I was like, this is the most Schefter thing I've ever seen in my entire life. You got two phones, you're pissing, like you just, you can't turn off, can you? And he was like, uh, well, I'm just trying to catch up, you know, just trying to catch up. And he starts talking really fast, like just trying to catch up, McAfee, you know, I just, I have been paying attention to the wedding love, love, you know. And I was like, oh, I respect it. I won't let you know I respect it. So I go to the end urinal, right? Which is, I feel a customer. Right? Yes. So I go to the end urinal. Normally I don't, by the way. Normally I go to stalls. I'm a strictly stall guy. Mm -hmm. But at this wedding, I was nowhere near, anywhere near importance. So I, there was no reason for me to be Felt like, safe. Hey, I was like, there's no, so as soon as I start peeing, he gets, I guess he gets done and I have my phone out, right? I'm scrolling through my Twitter and he goes, oh, look at you. <laughs> like he started judging me, you know, because <laughs> I literally just made fun of him for doing it. He takes the picture, he comes up and he goes, uh, you care if I tweet this? I was like, I would love for you. <laughs> he was like, uh, what about Instagram? I was like, oh, I would uh, love for you. Sure. But I, he was like, I'll put it on Facebook too. I was like, awesome. <laughs> I was like, Chef, you're the fucking man, dude. He was like, uh, he was like, that was so funny to me. That was so funny to me. You, you just died. You got a yarmulke on. <laughs> I met up late, and I saw him, and Pat's like, Evan, Evan, you got to see what Shefty just tweeted. So we all go over to Shefty. He's fucking giggling like a schoolgirl at this photo showing hey, it to me, and I thought was, it was so he was awesome. funny. He, oh, he, was, he took a lot of heat in the comments for it. Oh, for being creepy? Yeah, big yeah. time. I would assume bathroom photos aren't the best. I sure I should have told him that. But who gives a Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah, he did crazy. ask me. He's like, you, mind, you mind if I... Well, Tweet you were this? you were smiling in it, looking yeah. at him. So, you know. well, I you know the only thing I I, I wish I would have staggered my legs a little bit so you could get a little depth on the calves. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the way the marble was in the background. Chef, let me know if you're gonna take a picture, man. He, he kind of did, and it was an amateur mistake. But now that I know though that if 
<laughs> Somebody shooting from direct over there. He just backed the leg up a little bit. That is the one of the first things Stafford said to you at the wedding. He goes, looks at your legs. Holy shit, you really got some cannons down there. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Matthew Stafford, cool guy. Might throw for 10,000 yards next year. Yeah, yeah. That's, I've always, everyone's always said he's the coolest dude. His wife, by the way, very, she's battling right now. Oh, she good. was there having a oh, good time. Good. Yep. Having good. a good time. It was just such a positive environment, man. I, I, I wish more people could go to Jewish wedding. Hey, how does the yarmulke work? I mean, did they say, are you with the bride or the groom, and then they hand you? No, it was uh, uh, commemorative yarmulkes. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. By the way, spelled yarmulke. Yeah, mm -hmm. yarmulke. Oh, yeah. Yarmulke. Didn't know that. I had mm -hmm. no idea. I was just learning about it. Yarmulke. They had commemorative. Had no it has a D and J on there with the date and the place. Now, I did hear from other Jewish at the wedding. That it was a cheaper uh, yarmulke because oh. it didn't have clips inside of it. You had to get a, a, a separate clip to clip into your hair. Mm. Because we got gifted yarmulkes here, if you guys do remember. Mm -hmm. I and, remember. And they have clips on the inside. Oh, yeah. So you just put it on your head and then sh like it's like a twist cap. Like a, uh, you just kind of push it and it locks in. So this one I put on. And I thought I had it on inside out because there was no clip. So I flipped the other side and I was like, that doesn't feel right. So I looked around and I was like, why is this, this thing not sticking to my head? They're like, separate clip. I was like, oh, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheaper clip. Well, he's got to pay Jason Collins this year. <laughs> extension in Atlanta. So. <laughs> it was, uh, it was so, no, I think the, the thickness of it, it was a thick, thick ass yarmulke. Yeah. Good so I don't think they could put the clips in it, is what I was actually told later after being lied to, I think, by the first Jewish person. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Everybody had fun, though, man. Everybody had a blast. Um, I just think that when you get a chance to, to go to something like that, you have to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Something like we, you've never experienced before. Yeah, but but also right? with the humans over there. Yeah. yeah. I think the amount of money in there might have <laughs> toppled a few billion dollars. I oh. think you're right. Like, there might have been a few billion. You know that song where uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce are like, what do you think is going to happen when there's a billion dollars in an elevator? Like, I think there was a couple of those elevators. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think there was a couple of those elevators at that thing. And everybody was so nice to us. I, I would have never guessed. I mean, let's be, come on. I did not deserve to be there. I agree. I actually no. said that. <laughs> when I we're agree. sitting with those three agents, I'm talking to another CA agent lady, and she was like, those three agents right there are like the most powerful people in all of sports. And he I just he should have heard the way I was talking. <laughs> yeah. And I looked at her, I was like, I shouldn't be here right now. And she's like, well, I really shouldn't be either. But eh. I, I didn't know that until after, by the way, what Foxy just told me. Yeah. So I wasn't told about the importance of the people I was talking to until after I talked to you them. You could tell, though. Uh, they were so like nice and they, casual, very casual, yeah. open. They not a, didn't have ties on. They had like open button downs. Had a sport coat. I mean, drinking. I think they were drinking beers. I think they <laughs> I were think drinking so. beers. Isn't that better yeah, though? Like you like went into that light. situation like that instead of like thinking they're so bigger. One thousand percent. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But uh, now I've been known to very much uh, act differently if you're a higher status. <laughs> than, uh, that is something. No, but it would have been in the back of my mind. Yeah. The one guy I did know, like the one guy I did yeah. know, is the guy. His name's uh, Nick Khan. Strictly because Joe Tessator tweeted a photo of me and him at uh, one of the WWE events. Not me. Joe Tessator did. And a, one guy who knows sports media was like, oh, not often pictured. Nick Khan on the right. <laughs> uh, one of the most powerful humans on earth, basically. And that's yeah. the only reason why I knew that. I didn't know who the other guys were until after when Foxy was like, hey, that, that, that lady just said, like, those are the most powerful humans in sports. Basically. Literally. I was like, oh, shit. Well, you know, we. <laughs> I'm not an agent. <laughs> that guy is electric. He's man. awesome. I don't know why he isn't on microphones. I, I assume he's doing okay. Yeah. yeah, I assume he's doing bit. He was electric, like making me laugh very, very hard for being such a high up executive. I would have never guessed, but very thankful to everybody. 